Hi Linda, how are you? Welcome to the feed. I'm trying to figure out what I want to use tool-wise for this to start out with. Um, i get some of my basics ready and then try to get some of these good things going. I'm also trying to do a uh, trying to do a live feed and trying to watch. I was trying to hook it up on my laptop so you guys could see it but apparently I can't do that and I don't I'm not I'm not technologically advanced insofar as the uh, computer goes so I know that the video I did yesterday or the day before it was really bad because uh, I have the flashlight shining on this, but what I'm trying to do right here, you have this tricky area in the throat I'm trying to sculpt out. <clears throat> and I got my heat gun. And I hit that with a little heat and get it a little bit mushy. That's all. And then try to sculpt this in where it's smooth. And it allows me to do some smooth bone sculpting. And bone is very, very hard to do. Um, like I mentioned the other day. Hey, Al. Thank you, Aaron. I appreciate that. I'm trying to make sure that I can define the bone parts from the other pieces that are there. Because um, the throat is a little bit defined in the photos and I'm trying very hard to give this a little depth on this and it's a little difficult sometimes because I'm looking at a flat picture and it's got curves. Thank you Linda, I appreciate that. He's one of mine too. Um, I've not really gotten into a whole lot of uh, of uh, personal sculpting. I've really wanted to, but there's been a couple ideas that I've explored that I wanted to do with him. And, of course, Mr. Topher Westcott, God bless his soul, beat me to the one that I was on with uh, the ghost Jason. So I turned around and thought, well... I got to jump the gun on this one and see if there's some way I can uh, do this because I really wanted to do one just freehand all by myself and fortunately I was able to thanks to the goodness of Mr. Jason Brooks do this part and the thing of that is is uh, I had to keep it secret for a while, and uh, now it's pretty much about a month out from the movie, and I'm working on this pretty much constantly every day. Uh, so, you know, I'm trying to get as much of this done and get it ready before a movie release that I can. and. Uh, it's troubling in spots because uh, I take all this gooey stuff, this clay here, and I just put it down here on the base and get it out of the way. That way if I ever need to take clay and uh, put it back in somewhere, I've got little bits I can pick off of here and uh, put back on there somewhere. Like I'm trying to sculpt and mold the throat area here, it's, you know, it's going to be a little difficult and tedious. And I'm not really skating in dangerous territory because, like I said, I've got this mask on him, but uh, I don't want Jason Brooks to get mad at me for showing you guys something that you haven't already seen. And, of course, people have seen the, you know, he said the face is a big no-no. 
and of course you've seen the shots on the on the uh, on the page where of course he's got muscle striations and stuff and that's kind of what I'm just working at trying to get this uh, muscles done and the throat sculpted and that type of thing so now I've got a general appearance of this and what I'll do is see there's the the, the lines of the trachea and the windpipe. So what I'm trying to do is just add a little depth and I'll hit this every once in a while with a heat gun just so it'll soften up and it'll give it more of a rounded contour. Uh, Linda, I've been sculpting really for a number of years, believe it or not. I used to be a, um, I used to be a, a taxidermist and I had to learn how to sculpt in animals and stuff like that. So, um, I've been doing this for a number of years. I just really haven't, it was always a hobby to me. I never thought to actually try to make something and sell it. Um, so that was where... Some people, you know, some of my taxidermist friends on here, as a matter of fact, were saying, hey, you know, you ought to uh, think about doing something um, that you can do with uh, sculpting and make it. And then I just started looking around and saw some of the mask groups and stuff like that. And I really wasn't into wanting to make latex masks or anything, but then I had that opportunity from... Uh, uh, Chris Russell to do the Jason thing, and I thought, well, let's see how this takes off, um, and, you know, just kind of goes from there, but then I thought, you know what, I'm going to freehand do this, and this sculpt is about a month old. Um, I started on it about a month ago with, um, with just doing the entire back and the spinal column, I did a live video on that. Hey, God, yes. There you go. Thank you, Tim. Ha, <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So, um, all I'm doing now is just trying to give this uh, throat a little definition and depth um, where it looks like a trachea because this is all going to be exposed bone in the, in the windpipe. And... Uh, so all I'm doing is looking at a photo I've got on my laptop, and I'm sorry I can't show you guys this. I got it blown up to just that specific piece. So if it accidentally camera moves over there or falls over, um, you know, it will uh, it will um, not get me in trouble. So you know, I've had to do a little bit of anatomy studies and stuff like that, Linda. Um, a lot of that I did get done when I was doing the uh, taxidermy, and uh, it doesn't take much. It really doesn't. Um, the thing is, you just have to put definitive lines in where you want them to go. You basically sculpt a uh, area by photos. And see, I'm having trouble with all this part with the with the the stripes and strips of muscles and stuff because they kind of go. He's got you know, tendons and shit all over here, and I'm just like trying to work and figure out what can work for that, and I don't have anything conclusive on that um, yet, but thankfully I think I've got some time on this. Oh, please, Tim, I would love that. I really would. Um, I've saw your book on Amazon, but to be honest with you, uh, my wife has restricted my credit card yet again, so I'm short on funds until uh, I start getting some stuff sold. I've got a couple of Godzillas that have been sold, but that money's already been repurposed for materials. I don't really have anything that's on the books to be sold or getting sold now. Um, so I'm just kind of doing this to, uh, by time, get something else in the works. Um... But I do appreciate that greatly, Tim. Um, I uh, 
really want to, 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 to know what happened to me with your experiences with the Capitol Police and all that. And here you are, hockey mask designer. You know, I still can't get into that. Um, where uh, it looks, um, it looks good, you know. Okay, I appreciate that, Tim. Just PM me and I'll send you my address and all that if you want. Um, and for that, I will cut you a deal on one of these masks. How about that? Just don't tell nobody. Just don't tell anybody. Of course, everybody watching, you can't hear me say that, right? So like I said, some of these details and such are going to be my interpretations. So don't, uh, if, if it doesn't, oh shit. I've got a thin spot on the form. Damn. I knew there was going to be an issue somewhere. So when I made this block here, I pressed it up on the form and I've got thin spots where I'm scratching. And it's coming right down on this. So I've got to thicken that up just a little bit. I don't want to pour silicone or anything on there and have it uh, come out. So like I said, this is what I'm going to do is just gently etch in the, uh, the trachea area. And kind of melt it down a little bit and give it some definition. It'll be painted as bone, so, you know, There'll just be some raised areas and lowered areas. So, where is that? There it is. So I can take some clay and put it back up here if I need to. All I want to do is try to give some definition, depth, and smooth that out. Because I've got to get under the jaw and all that stuff and, and do that. But right now I'm just focusing on the trachea. And that's, like I said, one of the tough things because it's uh, exposed bone. So it's going to look different probably from what you guys see in the movie. I don't know if there's going to be a ton of details that you'll catch in the film. Because I haven't even seen it yet. But... I will have uh, my own personal touches on this thing to ensure that, uh, you know, it's my work and that type of thing. And, you know, I may be the first to do one of these, but I'm guaranteeing I won't be the last. And I don't expect to be. Because uh, the studio that did make the mask that did the silicone version. I don't know if they're going to do a latex version. I think they do just primarily silicone. And I'm not even sure I haven't even reached out to see if they're going to do anything um, with that in itself. If that's going to be the mask uh, done for this. And like I said, that's silicone. So I'm doing resin and latex. Um, I'm trying to get a jump on Scareware. Scareware seems to be the guys that do a lot of the, uh, a lot of the um, resin work. So, <clears throat> that's where uh, I got to see if I can get a jump on some of this stuff. And what I'm doing here is just sculpting out some of the lat details here. And these are rough sculpts. These are just rough sketches. Nothing's finalized until I can get it shaped and detailed. But once I can get it shaped and detailed, it'll be just about perfect. And I like I said, because this is latex, I don't know how well this is going to transfer to it. So all these tiny details that you see may or may not show up well in the latex itself. So I just got to be aware of that. 
and I'm looking to see what looks like is a trap muscle that cuts down right down here. So I just want to get some kind of a definition thing here. And I'm not really skating on thin ice, I don't think, because uh, I'm not showing you facial details. I'm showing what's going on with the neck and the, and, and, and the like. So, you know. You guys got any questions or anything? Feel free to ask. I'm trying to pay attention at the same time I'm doing this. I'm going to build up a little bit on that just to make that a little bit more pronounced. Because I've got it over here pronounced, but I keep carving it down. And that's the whole thing with this thing. It's a lot of, of putting in and taking away. That's basically what sculpting is. Trying to give good definition to what you can see and what you can't see. I'll put that on there. That's a heat gun. You use a hairdryer for this too. I bought a heat gun because I had another uh, issue with another thing. And I liked it so much that I thought, oh, okay. I can use this for a lot of stuff. And my wife was like, I wanted to use a hairdryer, but it was too noisy. And she was like, well, you got that heat gun? Try that. Okay. My wife is a really good uh, um, promoter for, um, for stuff that I do. She really gets behind me. She doesn't like horror movies, and she doesn't like Jason. Um, but uh, she does really do support me, and... Um, I gotta, I gotta say, there's nothing better than having somebody in your corner like that. Uh, B-Man, this is the, um, it's a muscle, it's kind of like a thin layer flesh rotting. You see, I probably, you can't probably see the definitions, but I'm going to show you right here on the uh, throat. Can you see that? Probably can't see that. It's a windpipe, the trachea. That's part of it that I can show you. Um, so what I'm trying to do now is, is he's got some lateral muscles. If you see some of the photos that Jason Brooks and them pub published on the, on the Facebook, he's got striated neck muscles that come down. Um, basically what I'm trying to do is you've got neck muscles that come down right across here. And then you've got your chest muscles that go, and they're kind of ribbed, they go, you know, like this, and they loop around, and uh, that's what I'm trying to do, is trying to catch that, and uh, make that happen. And the thing is, I'm not sure if I'm making it too thick or too thin, but like I said, this is going to be a latex and a resin thing. I'm wanting to get one shot for both, and hopefully I could do one shot for both. But only time will tell. I absolutely love. Somebody asked me yesterday, I think, if I was working in uh, hard clay. And uh, no, I usually work just in uh, medium and soft. Not soft clay, my bad, medium. Um, where is that? I just have it in my hand right here. Um, I work in medium clay because when you heat up with a heat gun, it really gets gooey without getting goopy. Um, the inspiration for the face, Bean Man, if there is no inspiration. I have all the photos uh, from the movie. I actually have photos of the mask that they used. Um, I have everything. Um, this is not an inspired, it's inspired only in the fact that I'm doing it as a fan and uh, I'm doing it as, uh, um, you know, hopefully I can be the one to do this 
for you guys, you know, for those that want masks and stuff like that. So, and like I said, up to 35 to 50 percent of each sale, I think about 50 percent of each sale, if I can get people promoted enough to buy them, is going to go to Shriners Hospital. So, um, on that, I think I'm going to be good with, uh, I'm going to be able to do that. And that's important to me because um, I kind of want to follow the footsteps of Steve Dash, C.J. Gra Graham, and all the guys that worked on the film because they donated, even Jason Brooks, they donated all their money um, to Shriners Hospital. I mean, personally, I can't donate every single cent, but I do want to donate something. I do want to, to be a part of that and helping kids. Because uh, with all the work I've got going on, I really don't know. Um, I don't really have the time to do the, the heroes, uh, the hospital for heroes thing that I wanted to do. So, um, you know, so that's kind of, of where I stand on that. Uh, ah, shit. I've got another damn thin spot. See, that's the whole thing with this thing. I don't have enough clay. And I've got thin spots everywhere on this thing, and I've got to get them built up. They're not thin that they're going to show through the whole thing and all that, but I'm just, it's, it's irritating. So I've got to take some clay from one spot and put it over here and make another thing and take some clay from somewhere else and Put it over here and make another one. So. I know at least I've got like two inches thick on this thing, so. I'm giving to charity, that's right. Not everything, Bean Man, I am giving to charity, though. Um, I've got, I feel like I'm obligated to do that because I'm part of... Jason Brooks having allowed me to be part of this by entrusting me with all the photos and images and stuff. Um, I really want to uh, do something like that. My wife is big on tithing, and I don't really trust churches and whatnot. On uh, I'm not religious per se, but I am spiritual, and she's kind of big on tithing. And um, so I want to do something that's equal to that and then give to an organization you can trust. That's the whole thing. And uh, that's why I thought, oh, the Shriners would be perfect because they've been done. Those guys, it's one of Steve Dash's favorite um, uh, yeah, that's one of Steve Dash's favorite things. Uh, there's a big story behind uh, the whole thing on that. Um, and Steve Dash is a big part of that uh, charity donations and everything. So um, I'm just, you know, I love Steve, I uh, love CJ. So I, uh, you know, I want to be a part of that. And you know, this is this is one of the ways I know how. And I can contribute, contribute some talent, make some fans happy. At the same time, uh, you know, um, you know, make a, a little bit of money. I'm not going to make a huge amount, but I'm hoping this will open the door for other stuff I do. Because I still want to go back and revisit Stallone, Schwarzenegger, and all those guys. But I'm trying to, like with the Godzilla, I'm trying to stay on top of trends as they come along. And these have been projects that I've been working on, but... Um, you know, it's just kind of a, of a, uh, I don't know, it's kind of weird, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's uh, stuff I've been working on, but I haven't had the opportune time to do anything with. Like, I've got an alien wall hanger. Okay, that's just sitting there waiting for me to get it done. If they come out with another alien movie this year or something like that, then I'll have to jump on that, you know. But I've got like four or five projects. I've got people that want me to do commission work for them. Uh, one dude wants a, a Game of Thrones dragon egg. 
So I've got to do that. Um, you know, and then I've got ideas other people have done, but I'd like to do them, but maybe make them bigger. Like I'd like to do almost a life-size alien uh, egg opening or something, you know. And uh, I don't know, it's just, just kind of a, something that uh, I feel is just, you know, shit. I don't know. It's it, it's it's strange. It's just kind of a, um, just the way my mind works. Being you might understand that. You know, you never really do anything on a uh, purposeful level, but your mind just kind of wants you to go. Oh, okay. I'm gonna try this and see what happens. And uh, let's see where it goes. Now the thing about these muscles are really uh, getting me, and I've got the stupid, I'm going to have to move this, uh, hang on, I've got clay falling in my ashtray here, and I've got my ashtray up under here, I'm going to have to dump this, because I don't want to lose any clay bits, hang on just a second, I'm going to be right back. Okay, now I've got a clean ice track and prop this up where I can see it, you guys can see it. And uh, I can actually have clay fall in there when I'm sculpting. And then I don't have to worry about um, losing any clay because this stuff is expensive. And I don't want to lose any at all. Of course, this is not really, this is not a smooth thing. I should just hit this with a heat gun. I do want to mush out this clay a little bit. Just kind of put the striations in the chest and stuff like that. Move it out. I like to put a little bit up on the neck and it'll melt and it'll get mushy. So I can put some definition in there. And see how that um, that wax, or not the wax, but the clay, I don't know if you can see it. Thank you, Jeremiah. Um, you see this wax, or the clay, I'm sorry. When I poke holes and I make little scratch marks, it gives it kind of a, a melted, rotted look, and I've got, um, I've got, um, you know, I've got stuff coming in like pour rollers from uh, Scandinavia. One guy's already giving me shit about it. He's a professional guy out in California. He's like, "Oh, pour rollers are for amateurs," and I'm like, "Yeah, dude, I'm a fucking amateur. I'm not a damn professional." People think I'm a professional, but I'm not. You know, I'm nowhere near the class of fucking Tom Savini or anybody like that. I might have, I may have sculpting skills and stuff like that, but, you know, that's from taxidermy. That's not from, you know, not from me making masks. I just etch a bunch of lines in here, and they don't really have any form except for this is supposed to be a thick muscle that comes down the front of the face, the front of the chest. And like I said, it's going to be one of those, it's going to be a um, formed, rotted muscle. So I'm trying to give linear uh, striations to the muscles. At the same time, put a little definition on them. That type thing, I'll just melt this off a little bit. 
Let it get kind of gooey and runny. And then I'll just go back in and just gently put some lines in there. Thick lines now. These will be thick lines that I can do. And it'll come out and look a lot better towards what the movie's supposed to look like, the movie version. And the heat gun is a good tool because you can use it to heat up the clay, it'll melt, and then when it melts, you can um, you can go back in and uh, redefine the lines and the work and that type of thing. Just kind of get things to, you know. Uh, Bean Man, are you aware of the Vengeance fan movie? There's a Friday the 13th Vengeance fan page. Maybe you should go check that out on Facebook. That's where all this stems from. And like I said, Jason Brooks is the guy that played Jason Voorhees. C.J. Graham, who played uh, Jason in Part 6, is now playing Elias Voorhees, Jason's father. And it's kind of a takeoff story from Part 6. So... Um, that's where this is all going. So a lot of this is going to be painting and the details. So if it doesn't look like much right now, don't worry about it. It'll be painted in the details. So that's the thing. That's where all the heavy, heavy lifting is. Is in the details. thing about this is, is I try to be as atomically correct as possible with some of this to where the muscles are, you know, going one way and they stretch across another and that type of thing. And I'm trying to give as much detail as I can without overdoing it and without underdoing it. come up with all the strip bits just take them off and put them on there yep it will be uh, it will it will be uh, it looks like Jonathan um, it looks like a possible pushback to July um, I was hoping it was gonna be the end of the next month but according to um, the director who's also editing it, it looks like there may be a pushback to July, mid-end of July. Now, I told them, good, that gives me a little bit more time to refine this and do all the good details and everything that I need to do um, to make this about as perfect as I can get it. So, that's a plus for me, but uh, everybody really wants to see it, so... It's going to be, it's going to be different. I can tell you that much. It's going to be very, very different.
The one thing about this, it has fleshy body bits, so that's a good thing. And I'm trying to get as much detail as I can in this. And, uh, it's kind of one to do differently. There is a deep line that goes right across the chest. And I may get a saving grace here with some of this clay. It looks like it cuts off so I can take some of this shit off. All this excess clay, I can take off and use it elsewhere. So then I've, what I've done is just come in and, and done a, uh, a little build on some of the tendons and stuff. Because they kind of run into the muscles, and i got to make them look like they're running in and running under and kind of everything merging. That's really what I want to do, is just get this as smooth as possible. And then do lines across here as well. See, I could go and get this thing, Peter Anthony, uh, what do you mean they just had a premiere of it? What are you talking about? They just had a premiere of what, the Avengers movie? They haven't finished editing it that I know of. Uh, this is, um, Jonathan, this is for fans. This is me uh, doing this for fans. This is like me being a sculptor, mask maker, uh, doing this for fans. Although I've got, you know, the AOK -okay and the green light and everything from Jason Brooks to do it. Um... Uh, you know what, Bean, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, I am competing with Topher a little bit. Like I said, both of us went on the uh, on the Ghost Jason, and he won that one. So I'm like, well, you know what, I'm, I wasn't mad or anything, but I thought I'll be damned if he's going to get two for two. <laughs> I'm going to do my best to get out in front of this, and not, not that Topher's not a bad guy. Um, okay, where was this at, Jonathan? And where was that photo? No, 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 dude, this is not for a movie scene. They already had that mask. There's two masks, there's two of those masks. And, um, they already had that one. Uh, Don Shells has one, and Jason Brooks has the other. So this is not, this is not a movie, movie mask, no. This is my cop, my version of the movie mask, as I kind of can do it. Uh, Jonathan, was that from Peter Anthony? And you were thinking he went up to the Crystal Lake this past weekend. And they had a big viewing up there on a giant TV screen. Was that it? Um, that was not the movie Vengeance. That was the original Friday the 13th. Every year, people go to Camp Nova Scobie and uh, where, where Crystal Lake is. And they... Uh, they watched the original Friday the 13th as part of a, you know, be there where it happened type thing. And uh, that's what that is. That's not got anything to do with Vengeance other than it's a Friday the 13th movie. But that's the original. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I pretty much think that was what that was because trust me. If they had had a premiere, you would see this face. Um, that's a given because Jason Brooks would have said, okay, we've got the big premiere going. Go ahead and show it. So 
So yeah, that would have been that would have been that would have been a number of things right there. So yeah, I would get the green light from from Jason Brooks firsthand. Um, Adam Marcus actually messaged me, and uh, he's supposed to be doing a photo op with the head that I made him. The Jason goes to hell, so. I'll have that, and I'm hoping maybe that will do something to generate some business as well. See, the thing with this is i got to generate these muscle things, and like I said, that's going to be all in the details of the chest. But I don't know if you can see, but I'm doing like fine line scratches and just running the heat gun over and just letting it melt. I need a long strokes straight across the chest. That's all they are. Just long, light strokes. Topher's got quite a lot going on over there on his end. He's got masks he does, and he's got a, a dead Ted sculpt he's doing for Corey Kaufman. Um, so I guess he got photos from Corey about the Jason that Corey's using, and he's doing that sculpt for the film Voorhees. I don't know if that's true or not. I like to think maybe that's a possibility, because he certainly beat me to the Ghost Jason one. But I'm very, very proud to have gotten on this one. Um, well, you know what? The thing about Roy is Roy was the imposter Jason. A lot of people don't like that because it's not a Jason Jason. So I would think a follow-up to that um, would be good. Definitely have a follow up to five. You could probably get, you know, the support of a bunch of people on that. Um, I wouldn't see why you couldn't do that. I've got a, 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 a tool here that's uh, um, got grooves in it. I'm just going to run that straight across here and make the lines. Just kind of put some muscle definition in here. Almost all artists, when they do something, they put their personal signature on it. So this is like a chest thing. I want to come out with lines on it, it's like curves and shit. This is something I had to kind of look at and go, okay. You know, then I get these definition lines, and these are not deep things. These are just, you know, things that kind of work and, 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 and do work with. Because all that's going to get painted over. And it's just giving impressions for the latex. So, um, it can be done right. And look like chest muscles. Big old Peter Anthony saw pectoral chest muscles. Now seriously, if I had to do uh, chest muscles with Peter Anthony, Jason would be too damn big. Nobody would, uh, nobody would be able to wear the outfit. So, okay, so I've got right now. As you can probably see, I've got one side already done, kind of the chest already done. Um, I'm going to refine this a little bit, and then I'm going to call this done for now, uh, only because, you know, I like the way it looks. I don't want to fuck with it too much because I'm afraid I'll mess it up. i got to redo the back and shit. Um, but I need to definitely do some lines and stuff down here. 
and get this going and get this defined and then melt that down and get that kind of gooey and goopy. It doesn't take much with this heat gun. It doesn't take much at all. Just a little bit of heat. This is clay melts real quick. So, Jonathan, everybody else got bored and you're the only one left, huh? Well, somebody's enjoying this. Hopefully somebody is learning something. You have script for remake of part five. Let's flesh it out a bit more. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of fan film projects out there, buddy. Uh, from what I last heard, Dave Brown was doing one called His Name Was Jason. And I don't think Dave made the Kickstarter cut for that. So that may have been a uh, that may have been a little bit of a of a, of a non-starter for him. He may have to go back to the drawing board on that. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure because I, I I started following it because everybody's jumping on it. Um, Jason Rising is another one that I'm trying to keep an eye on, but I really don't know a whole lot about. I don't know what the Kickstarter and all that is on that. Um, I thank you, Jonathan. I try. Um, and like I said, I'm showing everything from start to finish. Just so I can, you know, I can definitely say, hey, you know, I did this. I don't want anybody hollering shit like recaster and all that bullshit. Whether they get jealous or not, because then you guys can come in there and go, uh-uh. I watched him do this shit live. So now what I'm doing is I'm I'm kind of restructuring the other side of the of the chest here, where some of this has been shown on the uh, form, and I'm just doing a little scrap restructuring here with the lap muscles that go across the top of the collarbone. And these are muscles, and the thing that's really struggling about this is the muscles are just, they're everywhere. That's why I said the detail on this thing is phenomenal. And I'm only going to be able to get away with so much with this because of the detail. I can't do anything that's going to be like uh, really good for the uh, for the um, silicone because I'm not doing silicone with this not right now anyway. Um, if that company decides they want to do silicone, they're going to have the rights and obligations to do it because they made the first mask. Me, I'm just trying to do latex and resin for right now. I'm just trying to sculpt this out to where it gives it definition and form. I really can't do much with this other than, you know, try to give it form and shape. Actually, I think they're going to have a more detailed version of um, of the Vengeance trailer. Talking with Dave Brown, he says he thinks they're going to release an almost full trailer. Although I think the trailer that they've already done is just bad ass. I mean, having the uh, having the um, the uh, 
Fallout game music was ingenious. I don't know who the hell came up with that, but that was a beautiful thing. It fits perfectly, too. I don't know who did that, but I'm telling you, that's a beautiful piece of work, man. Seriously. What idiots are you talking about? Jonathan, what idiots are you talking about? He said, don't remind you of those idiots. Oh, the guys that were talking about that you don't do this and you don't do that and all that shit? Or are you talking about uh, the thing that with uh, Dave Brown? Oh, yeah, 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 fucking bullshit. I know. I, my wife says I'm having a hard time getting past that, but I'm pretty much past it now. Because enough people have seen me do this shit. That they can't do that crap and call me that anymore. That's a bunch of bullshit. But the thing that really got me was they wouldn't let me try to stand up for myself and explain what happened. So that's why I kind of mention it in the videos in case somebody's peeking to run back and tattle and tell and say, Ooh, he's doing this. So, you know, that's kind of like a, oh, I guess you could say a special thing. This is going to be uber fucking special, though. I really like this. Now, like I said, my work right here is not going to reflect too much on the, uh, on the um, movie portion. Because there again, I'm just kind of doing what I can do. And a lot of people, oh, well, you know, you, 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 you're just taking the easy way out. I'm like, okay, yeah, sure, I'm taking the easy way out. But, dude, you try sitting here sculpting something for a fucking month and see how it looks when you get done with it and you spend all day with it and you're doing all the shit and you're trying to redefine it and everything and make it look perfect. Nothing is going to be perfect, I'm telling you, nothing. I see I'm going back up here to the throat and kind of thinning things out a little bit because I see shit where I can make that a little bit better. Ha <laughs> ha! I love that. I just hope I don't run any more thin spots for this shit. Um, I'll tell you what. Uh, the thing about this is... Oh, yeah, Jonathan, they're running around saying that about every goddamn body. Excuse my French for those on here that are looking or listening and don't like bad language. I'm Southern and uh, non-politically correct, so... You will get a few cuss words here and there. Um, yeah, the, 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 the recast of word is like hollering racism nowadays. They just, anybody that doesn't believe what they believe or agree with what they agree or go along with those guys, James Powers and all those other idiots. Um, although I don't have a beef with many of them. Um, just, they, they, they just want to think they're in some kind of special goddamn clique. And I'm like, I'm not in high school anymore. I'm 52 years old. Uh, I don't have time for bullshit and child games when it comes to stuff. So, you know, I try to stay out of the drama. But if somebody wants to call out something on me and try to say, oh, you're doing this, you're doing that, and I can prove them wrong, well, I'm going to come right back with it and prove them wrong. But like I said, for the most part, I just block them and move on. Um, now, to get to your question, Bean Man, um, part six is gray. Uh, this can involve a lot of grays, a lot of black. You got to remember, 
Dude's been under the water for 35 years. So I'm going to do a lot of colors. Now this is kind of a reflection of more realistic muscle tones. Um, uh, so it's like the muscles and stuff like that. I'm just trying to get the definitions of everything to look as accurate as possible. Um, but the thing is with the... Uh, with the muscles and all that, it's um, it's going to be more at, uh, how do I say, anatomically correct, atomically correct. Um, so that's what I'm going for, is just a basic anatomy likeness on this. And... Um, That's why I said I kind of shoot for the stars on some of the stuff. But see, I'm not wanting to do like a bunch of uber, uber, uber details on this because it won't transfer to latex that well. So, you know, so I'll turn them around. You can get a side view. And we'll see if we can't get some scrapings and scratchings going on the side here. And get that kind of melted down and formed and everything. So this is going to be basically just a generic version, I think. Because um, like I said, I'm sure somewhere, someone will come along with a better version. But for right now, this is going to be the first version. Marcio Charlie may be doing that. He may come out because he's gone back. But see, he likes a lot of blacks and reds in his. He does a lot of blacks and reds. So it's like maybe in Brazil, they don't have that many differentiations of uh, past primary colors and not to say that he doesn't do a good job but you know his is black and red on a lot of his work and uh, you see the full bodied suit that he made for part seven that's a great idea only problem is people are going to sweat balls like crazy under all that latex so they might want to look at getting into shape or realize what they're getting into before they actually put that shit on. Because just with a mask, it's very difficult to, uh, to do um, stuff, like wear a latex outfit. Now this whole back piece here, I'm going to melt this down. And just let this kind of get goopy and gooey. This whole back piece here is going to be um, all pore skin, pore uh, rolled. And it's going to have a lot of heavy uh, coarse skin, waterlogged type shit uh, done to it. So there's going to be like holes and all kinds of shit. Retro Jason variant. Who, this guy? Um, you know, I'm, 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 not, I'm not too much into the Retro Jason. To be honest with you, the, the Nintendo version. That model that I made of the Jason that nobody bought... Um, which was only $50, you could put it yourself, together yourself. I actually bought some day glow powder to try to make that resin glow in the dark. And they sent me the wrong fucking color. But uh, that's, that's the whole thing, they sent me the wrong color on that. So, um... 
I didn't quite get what I was looking for on that. Now see on the back of the neck I've got some lines and stuff and I just kind of go in, the, in there and just kind of, this is a double, a double thing. You've got the, um, you've got, let me get a flashlight. Hang on, I want to show you guys better because I know you can't really see it in the dark. Let me do this. Shine a flashlight on this. Is that better? You can see kind of the, the skin's kind of overlaid with a bumpy thing. And then you've got the pore pox in here. And then you've got the striped lines coming down. And then you've got some gooey. See, i got to go back in with some of these and kind of strip out the drips. And uh, make sure I get those out and make it a little bit more porous. Because all this back here is going to be rolled with... Uh, that's going to be rolled with a uh, pour roller and make it look like fleshy. And I should do that right here as well. But the thing is, i got to go back in and do the little bit of work on this part where the hole is, where the hockey mask would be embedded. And then do some fleshy bits on the back of the skull, raise this up a little bit. So, you know, I'm just kind of hanging out, doing this live with you guys. I need a brighter light in here is what I need. I really do need a brighter light in here. My wife's been complaining that the lights in here suck. They're too soft. And I'm like, yeah, well, i sorry. I don't know what to tell her. Go back over with the gun, muss it down, blah blah blah, let it get a little gooey and takes all those sharp edges off and makes it look a little bit more soft and subtle. And you get some definite deep definition in here when you do that. So Oh Bean, you bailing on me or what? Oh, Jonathan's bailing on me. Hey, I'll catch you, I'll catch you. I'll catch you on the other side, Jonathan. You got a job interview tomorrow, dude. That's so cool. That is really cool. I need to change out photos real quick. Hang on just a second. I had to pop up a back shot. And then I got to make it big. I just got to do this. Okay. This is about where that shit's going to stop. Just above there. So I got to go and smooth that out. That's going to be all porous and rolled and shit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Brillo pad. I got right here. And just right here, just start doing this. Taking these lines out. Because it's really on the back of the head that you want to have all the road rash and stuff. Like I said, I heat up the gun, hit it with the Brillo pad, bring up the clay and make it look lumpy and bumpy and mushy. Then go back over, soften it up, dries out, gives it good texture. 
horse texture as well as uh, yes Rogerio this is Jason this is the vengeance Jason from the forthcoming fan film um, do you know about Friday the 13th vengeance Rogerio that's what this is so um, this is the I'm working from photos that I've gotten from Jason Brooks, and uh, let's see, is he facing that way? Good, because I can take this mask off. Oh, the mask will stay on, okay. So, what I'm going to do here, yeah, I will be revealing this when I get the go-ahead from uh, Jason Brooks. And that will be in about a month, I believe. About a month time. I gotta. But I just wanted to do videos of live sculpting. Not just to prove that I do it, but to show people some of the techniques that I do. So if they decide they want to do live sculpting or they want to try it themselves, they can learn how to do it. I'm taking a little smoke break. Mm. So, what we'll do here... What the hell was that? Oh, the hockey mask fell off! Oh my god! It fell down and go boom! What I'm going to do is just push this around, make it a little bit more defined for bone, for the rest of flesh. I need to put a little bit more flesh in here. So what I do is I sculpt that around, get it kind of mushy, and push it around, flatten it out. But i got to push the edges out. Because it is kind of raised. And that's a bone spot. And that's where the uh, mask would have caused erosion from being on the back of his head all the time. So there'd been like a bald spot right there. If he had hair, he'd have a bald spot right here. So. If, like I said, right now all I'm doing is doing this and kind of going in here and texturizing the skin. I'm going to get some pore rollers from Scandinavia here, and I've mentioned that before. And, uh, that's going to be the big thing with this, where I can make some pores on here and give it some real good definition. Right now, it's just got like that rotted, gappy flesh look, you know. Now, of course, there's embedments where the the, the, the mass lines will go, so I still got to kind of do that a little bit. You know, the funny thing about this is that I've not noticed, or I don't know any, any, think anybody's noticed it, and I've kind of mentioned it to a couple of people. Did you know, and you may not find out until the movie, but if you've seen the side of Jason's head, there doesn't appear to be a machete mark where he got hit in the side of the head. And I was like, dude, y'all completely forgot he got killed. That's how he got killed. I don't know if it was just a mistake or if there's a reason behind that. Because there's a story with Tommy Jarvis, Elias Voorhees, and uh, Sheriff Rilato, played by Steve Dash on this. And I don't know what their story is, but I do know Tom McLaughlin was behind the writing of this. So there's got to be a reason. Um, 
I'm sure nobody just misinterpreted it or didn't realize it because we're all Friday the 13th fans. We all know that machete wound was integral to Jason and the death and all that stuff. So who knows what the reason behind that is, if there is a reason. Maybe we'll never know. It's like, why do they keep flipping the eye back and forth? They keep switching the eye from the right to the left to the right to the left. You know, go check there. Who's still watching with me? Who's still watching? Who's still interested in me rambling and running on and on and on? Push the edges of this up. Not a clean cut, but it's just like, you know, got to be ragged, rotted flesh. You are a bean man. You're my best friend. You're my best friend, dude. You stick and watch everything I do. You must have a boring life, man. No offense, but, you know, I'm just kind of joking with that, but damn. It's nice to see somebody really likes what I do. I don't have many friends in real life. Oh, yeah, I've got people I know that I went to school with and shit. But nobody ever wants to come visit me. So, you know, the guys I have on Facebook are my real friends. I've got one dude um, that's been a friend of mine for years, and he calls me every once in a while to see how I'm doing. And uh, that's about it. Other than that, everybody else is just like la-di-da-da. Kind of on their own with their own lives and stuff. My family's like that too. Sad. I love my family to death, but they don't seem to love me. Well, they do, but they don't really always say it or show it or anything like that. You know? So now what I'm going to do is just right here in this bald spot, is I'm going to go lay clay on it, kind of. I don't want to take away from it too much because I don't want it to become a uh, thin issue with like between the clay and the mold. Because I'm afraid if I dig down too far, I'm just going to uncover the form and it's just going to be a it's going to be a mess. And then when I go to cast the latex, the latex will come out too thin. Because a layer of, 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 of clay and shit will not work. I don't know. Maybe I'm just being paranoid. I just want to make sure this comes out good with uh, the latex. So, Bean, do you think you... Uh, well, I should call you Logan, right? Logan. Do you think you'd want to, uh, you find this interesting? Logan, would you, um, would you want to, uh, maybe start taking up sculpting and stuff like that yourself? Because really, it's not that hard to do. Get some monster clay and a hair dryer and some tools and go for it. Um, it is, it is pretty time consuming, but you know if you're like me and you're retired and you don't really have anything to do all day, um, you can find yourself doing this pretty easily. Putting this back in here to kind of shape this bald spot out a little bit. I want to get a little bit more rugged. 
See, this is where I start treading in dangerous territory, but I've already done this. It's been done for a month, but then I go back and look at it again. I'm going, I think I could do that better, and I end up fucking it up because I keep messing with it, trying to make it better, and I don't know when to leave shit alone. So, sometimes I can be my own worst, my own worst enemy on things. So I want it to be raised, but it looks like it's raised too much. I don't know. Maybe I can need to hose that down and shit. Now it's got melty, so I can go in and kind of shape it out. And make it a little bit more defined. So what do you think, Sean? I can't show the face because we've got somebody else on here, but uh, I'm going to wave at you. I see you, Sean. I see you, you dirty little man. I see you. Remember what movie that was from? For you guys that don't know, Sean was the one that backed the movie. Um, he gave a bunch of money to see that this movie was filmed. And he's really the guy that we owe a huge debt of gratitude for. So, he's kind of modest about that. But since he's on here live, I'm going to make sure everybody knows what a great guy he is. If it wasn't for him, we likely wouldn't have a movie. Put it that way. That's a little bit better, I think. Now I've got extra clay to play with. I don't know why I'm trying to use all the clay at once. i get this a little bit more defined right here in the back where the hockey mask drop to go. Then I'll probably work on the neck a little bit. Put that out, push it around, make it look a little raw and rotted like a jagged hole. Linda's back. Hi, Linda. You sculpt too, don't you, Linda? I know you're a member of the Latex Mask Group, that's why I was wondering if you sculpt it too, if you make masks or what? I gotta make my hollow oak tree here. Kinda of take a little bit of clay out of here, cause this is a... hollow place in the back of the neck. And I need some more clay to work with on other spots so I can shave this down, take that out, give me my oak tree back. There we go. Make that almost like a perfect curl. I'll put some muscle striations. I'm gonna get that thinner. Bring that down and thin that out and then put some lines in there.
I was like, a knot in a tree. Jason's got a knot in the back of his head. In the back of his neck, anyway. Okay, I'm going to get my little sculpting tool here and just go, what? Get some lines, just a few. Not a whole lot. I might, you know what I'm going to do? Here's where my signature's going to go. Yay! Guess what? I just got an idea. I don't know why I didn't think of that before. But guess what's going to go in this little knot hole? My company initials. KKC. I'm going to put them right there in that damn knot hole. Okay. Okay. C. go. Now I'll put my signature on there. So now Jason has a signature. Ow! Shit! Oh. Yay! And there's a little heart right down here too. So there we go. We can melt that down and make it look a little bit more natural and faded. But I'm going to do that. That way if somebody wants to say, hey, where would you get the mask from? Name's on the back, dude. The initials are carved in the back of Jason's neck. Ha-ha! <laughs> That's a good idea. Yep, got it. Perfect. Well, there we go. I just signed my own piece. Alright, now I got one more thing I'm going to do, and then I'm gonna, just going to leave this alone. Um, I wanted to work on the spinal column, but I've only got this and then this side here to do, and I don't want to really show too much. So, I'm going to call this a... Uh, um, I am going to put some chips and damage in it. Um, the thing is, is the spinal column right here, where you see this, is like I tried to make a raised spinal column. It's got a unique definition to it. It's not like a spine. It's just a couple of pieces of bone, and the strap comes across the back, and uh, it's, just, it's, it's a combination of bone and muscle. It's not fully exposed like it was in part seven. It's more like a partially rotted exposure. By the way, let's see if we can see that. Can you see the initials in the tree? KKC? I just put my name on it. Ah! So now I've got my name carved into the back, right here, Carolina Key Recreations. Um, yeah, this is going to be more of a... Uh, Spinal uh, muscle uh, flesh can screw it. Um, I've got, like I said, these textures with the with the back of the head and stuff. i got to go in and refine some of these. But, you know, like the top part with this where it looks like it's bald and rotted. Then I've got the bald spot on the top of the head, which I've got really defined. But I wanted to raise it up a little bit more. I think it may be raised up too much now. But that's going to be solid bone right there. And then, of course, you got this little eroded spot right here, which is going to be bone. Um, where Jason 
where the, the mass comes together and the buckle would be right there and it would erode that. And uh, so that would be an erosion spot there. There's an erosion spot here. Um, there's a slight erosion spot right here, which I gotta go in and redefine. That's kind of a partial with a strip of flesh going across the top. And then there's, you know, just all the the fleshy bits and just a, you know, the rotted look. And then of course I gotta get the pour rollers when they come in and roll across the back here and just kind of make that a little bit more spongy. And the head's got to be more spongy too. I mean, it looks good okay right now, but I want it to be a little bit more spongier, like a little bit wider and thicker. Um, look like a sponge, really. And like I said, all I do is take this Brillo pad and just mash it into the clay. And the Brillo pad's not really thick enough because all those hairs and fibers and stuff do a good job. But it doesn't do as good a job as a roller or a sponge, where if I had a sponge that was thick enough, like a kitchen sponge, I could take that and just kind of push it in here and make all that. But, you know, for the thing, it's just, uh, now I'm going to do this. I'm going to come around the front, but i got to put the mask back on them. Oh, you can't see anything on the front. So hang on just a second. Let me put the mask back on it. Because if this mask falls off and you see the face, I'm in big trouble. I'm in big fucking trouble. Jason will kick my ass. Oh shit, mask just popped. Oh shit, mask just broke. I didn't break, it's just come loose. It's all right. Super glue will fix everything. This is actually a thicker um, mask than I'm used to, um, strap-wise. Hang on just a second. All right, fuck it. You know what? I'm going to rely on this. I'm going to hold it. Because the straps came off. So there you see, like I said, what we did tonight with the chest and the lats. Right there, the lines coming in. Um, that kind of thing. And then, of course, the striations across the chest. Melted down. Um, let me put this over here for a second. Hang on just a second. I've got to put this mask here. I cannot lose that mask. Cannot lose that mask. So straps came off on the Voorhees mask. So see then I've redone the trachea. Right there you see the trachea. And then the chest pieces. Right here. So I've got that a little bit defined on that. And um, that's pretty much it. But dude is... If this mask falls off, I'm in big fucking trouble. So I'm not going to let this mask fall off. Matter of fact, I'm going to uh, turn this back around and focus on my ugly face for a minute. Because I've got something up here on the screen that I need to get off before I get in trouble too. Oh, come on. No one else doesn't want to work. There we go. Oh, yeah, I got the photos and shit I'm working from. So, anyway. Uh, no, I'm not being. I'm not doing uh, uh, Logan. I'm not doing a hockey mask with this. I am doing... I've got the guy that makes a hockey mask that designed and made the hockey mask for the movie. His name is Brian Hargraves. He goes by Splat Voorhees. He's the one that Jason Brooks picked to be the official, quote-unquote, official guy for the mask. It's a hockey mask. Uh, I don't do hockey mask at all. Uh, I'm not that good, and I don't want to get into that because there's too many cooks in that damn kitchen. Everybody in the mama does hockey mask on Facebook. And I'm just not that dude to do that. 
Uh, so no, uh, I'm not going to do any mask, hockey mask anyway. But I think I got this one fixed. This is uh, Voorhees, and I think Jeffrey Michael Farkamp did this one. Uh, so Voorhees Returns, this is the first one he did, LSS 2018. Um, I said seven, so I don't know who that is, because uh, I don't think they signed it. But here's the inside. And that's basically the, uh, yeah, I know the leather strap would be good, but see, this has the elastic ones. And I need elastic because the head's so big, I can't get a mask around it. Um, but when I cast this thing, uh, yes, the elastic, the leather should work. Um, I actually like this mask because it looks like a faded, kind of weathered, really weathered and faded sex. But like I said, that's the prop mask I use for the moment because it's got the only, uh, it's got the only, um, straps and stuff. Um, I do want to get the leather straps, but I don't have, uh, I don't have, uh, anything, you know, ready to go right now. So anyway, Logan, I'm going to say goodnight and go ahead and get off here. It is... 11.30, I think I'm going to play a little bit of Red Dead Redemption or Fallout 4. So I'm going to take a break from this and go enjoy some brain-numbing video games. All right, we'll see you. Thanks for tuning in, dude.